Hey there. Today I'm doing some foundation paper piecing and this is, um, I think, maybe the third step in the foundation paper piecing method that I usually use for um, lots of different paper piecing projects. I'm showing you how to do it though to make these leaves, which are I use on the flower hugs. I also use them on the Ferris wheel flowers quilt and lots of other things that I that I make. This technique can be used on much smaller things too. It's just done in about the same way. What you're going to need when you have your fabric ready, you have your pattern ready. This is one pattern. It's on freezer paper. It's numbered. So that's ready. You also will need, well, you'll need a small, well, a rotary cutter. Doesn't have to be little. If you have one of these add a quarter rulers, that's good. You can also use a regular ruler and a piece of cardboard is what I use. So before I begin, the best thing to do, uh, the best thing for me to remember to do is, I'm gonna start with number one. I don't know if you can see number one here. And I am going to on the, this is this pattern has been already marked with my sewing machine. So there are holes in the, in the paper. So I am going to go through and real quick, if I can, I am going to just fold these down. I'm going to show you this. Just fold them down on their lines. This is not a have to thing and a lot of times if I forget it, it's okay. So I am going to fold down on each of the lines. This particular pattern has nine pieces. So I'm going to do this. I'm just going to go through one to five right now. Piece number one is going to get a dark green fabric. So I'm going to go over here. Usually I have some little pieces that are dark green. Of course, today when I want one, I don't see one, but here's one that will work. And see how big this is. This is way bigger than I need because my piece here is just a little tiny corner. When you're doing the very first piece, you put your fabric right side down because you're always going to have your wrong side of the fabric facing your paper. And I am, I am laying this on the paper so that the seam line is about a quarter of an inch in and so everything is covered that will be a number one piece. Let me see if I can get that a little closer for you. I'm not sure if I can. I'm going to down here on this. See if that's a little bit better. So yeah, everything is covered on this piece. And I'm going to take it to the ironing board. And usually I take it to my big ironing board, but for today, I'm using dry iron and I'm just going to press, press that freezer paper when your iron is hot. Okay, my iron's not very hot right now, so I'm gonna have to hold it a second. Then, I'm gonna move this out of the way. I'm going to lay, well, I want you to look how much extra space I have. I'm going to use this on another time, so I'm gonna cut it off. Notice I left the paper there. Now then, for this type of work, you're going to pay, place a the cardboard that you have just right on that dotted line and fold it back. Notice I've got about a quarter of an inch. I'm not worried if it's if it's um, not exactly a quarter. It just needs to make sure it covers that whole spot. And I feel like it's coming off a little bit, so I'm gonna take my iron back over here. Apparently, it is not 
hot enough yet to get a good stick. You really need to have it sticking to your fabric. There we go. Now, again, I'm gonna put this down. I'm gonna peel this back. I have now my extra piece of number one is sitting, down, sitting out there. The next piece that I'm going to put on is a light green. Here is a light green. You can see on this light green, this is the back, this is the front. I am going to lay the front facing me, the, the right side of the fabric facing me. And I am going to look where I put it on my paper piece. Here is number two section, right there over to there. So I am going to lay this number two piece right in the same way. See how the point's at the top? I want the point of my number two piece at the top. I'm going to lay it here so that everything from here up is covered. It's covered down here. And I am going to take it to the sewing machine and sew right down this edge, but not on the paper, right next to the paper. Okay, I have my dark and my piece number one is upside down. This is piece number two, the light part. I'm hoping that you can see as I sew it on the sewing machine, I am sewing so that we're sewing right next to this white line where the paper is. And I have turned my needle um, length or the stitch length down to 2.0. You don't have to put it as small as you would if you were stitching on paper. Now then, I am going to flip the paper back and I'm going to flip the, oh, this is so hard to do, <laughs> so that you can see what I'm doing. There. And now, so we have sewed on the second piece, piece number two, and I take it to the ironing board and I press it very well on the front side. Then I always press it on the paper side too. Now then, you can see number two is covered all the this is piece two, see how it's all covered. So I need to trim it because I'm ready to add piece three. I'm gonna move this out of my way. I'm going to put my paper down between piece two and three, or on the line. And press back. And this is what I'm going, what I'm going to trim. So I take my add a quarter ruler and my rotary cutter and trim off the extra and throw it away. Now then, I'm going to need a dark piece. So the dark piece, if I set the dark piece like this, here is my piece of paper. Notice how the point on this triangle is going towards me. This triangle is going away from me, the point is. So I have to flip him around and then lay this on here. I can see, I don't know how well you can see, but I can see that this triangle is totally covered, will totally cover, the, the dark green triangle will totally cover this triangle. So I'm going to hold it carefully and take it to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew on the fabric right next to the paper. Straight stitch right next to it. Flip it, bring it back over here. Flip the paper over and flip the fabric over. Everything, I usually finger press it there. 
now it's time to press again. So over to the ironing board or your ironing surface and press on the fabric side. Flip over, press on the paper side. This is number three. Three is a dark. It's time to, uh, I always check, but see how the piece number three is totally covered. There's three, we've got it all covered. In fact, we have some hanging over into four. We don't want that. So we're gonna take our paper, put the paper between three and four on that dotted line. If you fold back, trim, We're ready to add piece number four. Piece number four will be a light piece. So here's a light triangle again. Now this one has no real right side, but I can see my paper piece right here is a triangle pointing that way. So I lay my piece just on top of the right side of this fabric there. I can see it's going to all cover. I'm going to hold it, take the sewing machine, and sew on the right side of this paper. And I'm going to continue doing this. Now let me press this piece, and then we'll have on four pieces probably show you without explaining so then we can speed it up maybe now I'm ready to fold back trim Add a dark. Ready for number six? I am going to just continue this way. Light, dark, light, dark. Well, it's actually dark, light, dark, light. All the way till I get to number nine. I can stop. Okay, I have added all the way up to piece number eight. And you see piece eight is actually covering a lot of both piece nine. So there still needs to be one more piece put on here. I'm going to Fold back, trim off, and before I try to put piece nine on there, since there's a lot of extra fabric, a lot of times I will just get these out of the way. It's hard to really see what I need to cover. This is piece nine, it's gonna be a dark one. I think this will work. I'm going to lay him right there. I'm going to make sure that he covers. It's kind of hard to see. So I'm going to make, I think he will cover fine. So he's right side up. Always remember when you add your new pieces, they are right side up, except for the very first piece. The very first piece, you start with it right side down. Okay, flip over. 
press. We're almost done. And you might notice that I have a whole bunch of extra fabric. What I usually do is take my rotary cutter and just cut right now. We're going to cut along the this isn't a very good, but I'm going to cut along the outside edge of where my, where my line is. The dotted line is this outside line is the seam line. I want to keep that because usually we are going to sew on that to attach this to some interfacing so that we can turn everything right side out and then applique it down onto something. If you are doing foundation paper piecing, the rule is have my papers on, leave your papers on until you deal with whatever's on the outside edge. If you're attaching this to something else that's pieced, leave the paper on, use that as your stabilizer until you get it put on. So what I'm going to do is I will eventually peel this fabric off of here and put um, a piece of interfacing on top and sew around it turn it right side out. Anyway, foundation paper piecing with freezer paper. Look how easy this is to peel off when you're done. You do not have to rip off any papers, uh, rip off anything. You've got it right there. It's all ready to go. Thank you.